In this session we're going to look at IAS2 which covers inventories. So we will look at what inventories are, how they should be valued, how cost and net realizable values are calculated, and we'll also look at the different methods that may be used when we value identical items of inventory. So first things first, what are inventories? Well, we have three broad categories. The first is goods for resale. This is where we have items held by a business and they're waiting to be sold to customers. Um, so they are held for sale in the ordinary course of business. We also have work in progress. Now these are inventories that are part complete. So um, it may be the case that we're looking at a piece of furniture that has been assembled but has yet to be finished or varnished. So it's in the process of production for sale. Once complete, it will then be categorised as goods for resale. The third type of inventory that we have are raw materials. These are the items that a company buys in, um, in order to be used in that production process. Now our next question is, how do we value um, inventories. And as per IAS2, every item inventory is going to be valued at the lower of either net realizable value or NRV or cost. So first of all we've got to define what we mean by these two terms. So net realizable value this is the amount that we would expect to gain from actually selling the piece of inventory that we're looking at. So we would start off by considering the amount we um, expect to sell it for and then we would deduct first of all any costs required um, for the item to be completed so that it could then be sold less any costs associated with that sale. So for instance delivery costs or perhaps um, commission costs. So we start with selling price and then deduct any amounts that we would have to incur in the future in order to achieve that selling price and that gives us our net realizable value. Cost is more straightforward and here this is something that you'll be much more familiar with. Um, it's the cost of getting that item of stock to its current location and condition. So it's going to include purchase costs, things such as the purchase price itself, net of any discounts. We'll also add on the delivery costs, the costs that we incur in getting those raw materials or goods for resale to um, the store um, or the warehouse or wherever that uh, inventory is held. And we'll also include any additional costs that we can't reclaim, such as import duties that we might have incurred getting the goods into the country. On top of purchase costs, there is also conversion costs that we would need to include in our cost figure. So there we're think looking at um, the direct labour cost that's been incurred when working on the, um, the goods. We'll also include any direct expenses that have been incurred, again, in getting those inventories to their present condition. And we will also include an appropriate share of production overheads. Now this might be calculated using um, absorption costing or activity based costing or some of the other costing methods um, that exist. So let's have a look at an example.
First of all, we'll start by considering the information that we have on a particular item of inventory with regards to its cost. We've incurred a purchase price of £250. We've got uh, we've incurred carriage in, so the cost of getting the item to its present location of £10. We've paid import duties of £20 and we've spent direct labour of £30. So those are all our uh, costs. We can now think about net realisable value. Now net realisable value, it's important to remember that here we're looking at um, how much we think we're going to sell this item for less any additional costs that we think we're going to incur in the future to achieve that selling price. So in our example we think we'll get a selling price uh, of £320 the item will cost a further £10 in order to complete it for sale and we've got a, uh, we expect to incur carriage out costs or costs of delivery to the customer of £15. So let's have a look at our answer. The cost is there in the table on the left. We've taken all of those different costs, added them up and that gives me an overall cost of £310. The net realisable value well, we start with the amount we think we should be able to sell this item for and then deduct any costs that we think we would incur in achieving that selling price. So that gives me a net realisable value of £295. We then compare the cost and the net realisable value and we will value the stock or the inventory at the lower of those two amounts. So that's £295. And we do that for each individual line of stock. So we might end up in a situation where at the year end, when we're looking at the value of our inventory, some inventory will be valued at cost. And there might be a small number of items that are valued at net realisable value. Now often with businesses um, we have identical uh, pieces of inventory. So for instance I might have purchased lots of uh, different types of bricks at different times and at different prices. Now this brings a particular problem to um, the valuation of inventory in that when we look at a pile of bricks it's very difficult to tell whether or not I bought that last month or last year. So I might not be certain of the price for which I paid for those items of inventory. So we need a method to value the inventory held. Now we can choose from the following methods. We can use FIFO or first in first out. Um, this is a stock valuation model in which we assume that the oldest stock gets used up first. So any stock that we hold at a given time, um, we assume that it was purchased um, recently or the most recent stock. So we're using the latest cost prices when valuing that stock. We can also use Avco um, if we wish. Uh, Avco look, takes an, a weighted average um, of the prices paid for the stock that we hold um, in inventory. Now um, both of those two valuation methods are dealt with in other sessions um, but I haven't included a further method that you may be aware of that is LIFO, last in first out. And there's a good reason for that. In IAS2 LIFO is specifically excluded. We may not use LIFO in order to value our year-end inventory. <laughs> 